Despite what you may hear in the media, it is possible to feed your baby a vegan diet from the get-go in a balanced, nutrient-rich way, but it's important to keep in mind that tiny humans have different nutrient requirements than adults do, so it's important to offer your baby the right foods in the right combinations. Now, if you're planning on feeding your baby a vegan diet, I strongly encourage you to go and speak to a registered dietitian specializing in plant-based diets first, just to make sure that you've got all of your bases covered. But in the meantime, I wanted to share with you the three-step process I used as a registered dietitian when introducing my little one to her first foods. First, let's talk about the type of foods that you should pay special attention to when feeding your baby. The first one is iron. And iron is a mineral that helps carry oxygen all throughout the body, and it's important for your baby's brain and immune system development. Now, babies are born with a certain amount of iron stored in their bodies, and the size of those stores depend on various factors, but generally speaking, most babies will start uh, depleting their iron stores around six months of age, which happens to coincide with the time at which most babies are developmentally ready to eat solids. So it's really important that you make sure to offer iron-rich foods at your baby's meals consistently because if they fail to get enough iron, it can uh, lead to iron deficiency anemia and that can cause irreversible developmental delays, which I'm sure you don't want your baby to have. I've dedicated a whole video to iron-rich foods that you can offer your baby and it's linked in the cards above and in the description box below if you want to check it out. The second type of foods to keep in mind are energy-dense foods. And for instance, fat is an energy-dense nutrient. And when I'm saying energy-dense, it means that it offers a lot of calories for a very small volume. And babies need proportionally more fat in their diets than adults do because they are growing at exponential rates and they have very small stomachs, which means that it's very difficult for them to eat large volumes of food. So energy-dense foods or fat-rich foods help them meet their energy requirements in a more easy way. Now, the last category of foods to focus on are nutrient-dense foods. And fruits and vegetables are some of the most nutrient-dense foods around and they can offer a great contribution to your baby's daily nutrient needs. And as an added bonus, the, earliest, the earlier you introduce fruits and vegetables to your baby, the more likely they are to enjoy these foods later on. Fruits and vegetables rich in vitamin C are especially important on a vegan diet because they help absorb the iron found in plants more easily. So it's a great idea to try incorporating a vitamin C rich food to each meal and snack. Just keep in mind that fruits and vegetables tend to be rich in fiber and in water, yet provide very little calories, especially vegetables. So they can fill up your baby and cause them to eat fewer of the other foods that are important for them to eat. So try not to go too overboard with the quantity. If you notice that your baby's having difficulty staying on their growth curve, you may wanna replace some of the fruits and vegetables with more energy dense foods instead. Another thing to keep in mind is that when introducing solids to your little one, breast milk or formula should remain the main source of calories. That means that if you're breastfeeding, your diet should remain well balanced and provide a reliable source of long chain omega-3s like EPA and DHA, as well as iodine, choline and B12, since your intake of these nutrients will directly impact how much your baby will receive through breast milk. And if you're formula feeding, make sure that your formula contains these important nutrients as well. That's in addition to the supplements you should provide directly to your baby. Now you can experiment with offering milk feedings before or after meals depending on what works best for your baby. Some mamas find that providing milk before meals helps their baby not become too frustrated because they're overly hungry, which allows them the time and the patience needed to slowly develop their feeding skills. Others find that their babies are more motivated to try new foods when feeling a little bit hungry, in which case it's perfectly fine to offer milk after solids. Okay, now let's put all of this information together in a simple three-step formula. Step one, pick an iron-rich food. For instance, beans, peas, ground nuts or seeds or iron-rich fruits and veggies. Step two, select an energy-dense food like avocados, hummus, olives or ground coconut flakes, for example. And step three, add a nutrient-dense food, ideally also rich in vitamin C, for instance, kiwis, oranges, bell peppers, kale, red cabbage, or broccoli. Now here are some examples of simple combinations you can make. I personally used a mostly baby-led weaning approach to introducing foods to my little one, which basically means that I offered her whole foods rather than purees from the get-go, but of course in baby-appropriate sizes and textures. But if you prefer to do purees, you can definitely just mix all of these foods together into a puree form. In the beginning, it may be easiest to offer a few individual foods on the same plate, 
But once your baby gets more comfortable with eating and develops their eating skills, then you can definitely switch over to more mixed style meals instead. For more vegan baby food recipe ideas or combinations, make sure to check out the accompanying article to this video, which I've linked in the description box down below. If you scroll to the end of the article, you'll find a printable list of foods split by category, so you can easily pick a food from each category when building your baby's meals. I've made a similar list for my partner when we first started introducing solids to our little one, and he found it quite useful, so I hope that you do too. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them during uh, my baby's next nap. Well, she's not a baby anymore. During my toddler's next nap. And with that said, that's it for today. Until next time, ciao, ciao.